moonlight brightened on the road on yet another summer's night in the Arizona deserts, as Arthur, known as Rusty Cage, and Johnny M. Little traveled on his horses. They did not carry much more than a game in a heavy bag. Johnny was still a hardened 16-year-old boy who, despite his young age, had been through a lot with his family and believed that he still had much to prove. Are we there yet? No. How will I know where we're going if you don't speak? You'll know when we get there. Yeah, you're a mysterious guy, Mr. Cage. That's what's kept me alive. Yankee, farmer, and now in league with the devil? Sounds more like a death wish. I am what I need to be, that's all. The boy was restless, as if life wasn't much without some kind of action. The night journey continued, and the silence was only interrupted from time to time by the sound of some animal or when Johnny humped. But no conversation took place between them. Then, in the middle of the night haze, a silhouette appeared. John, look out. Howdy, partners. Do you gentlemen need rest? I have a camp not far away. Arthur and John had joined the stranger's camp. They had been traveling for quite some time already, and the destination for young Johnny was totally unknown. So nothing better than a rest to break up the endless horse riding. I'm Lewis, and the boys here are David, Peter, and Manu Wild. Arthur, John. The astute boy noticed that Rusty refused to let go of the bag he carried, besides not taking his eyes off the newly met gang. Make yourselves comfortable, have some food, and rest. I know how exhausting long journeys can be. Johnny noticed that the group looked at them oddly. At first he thought it was because of their color, but he quickly dismissed this theory because of Manuel. Before the long pack was asleep, so only Arthur and Johnny were left at the campfire. Mr. Cage, why do you do this? I mean, why did you get into this hunting life? Uh, you see, boy, I was robbed by the devil. It took someone very important to me. Now, I'm going to hell to get her back. Anna? What? Why did you say that name? I heard you talking in your sleep the other day. I'm going to burn that place to the ground and torture the monster who did this to her. Well, kid, it's late. Morning will come pretty fast. It had been an exhausting day, but before going to bed, Johnny spent some more time at the fire reflecting on Arthur's words. Johnny was inspired by Mr. Cage. So while Johnny was wrapped in his thoughts, a figure snuck up on him. The boy noticed the figure approaching at the last moment, but not in time to stop the attack. His assailant was significantly stronger than he was. The boy failed to get out of his way and they fell to the ground. However, before the creature could drive his teeth into the boy's neck, it was stabbed in the back and howled in pain. Here we are, boy. Rusty, Cage's vision was heartwarming. He was holding a wooden stake in one hand and pulling the other out of his bag. Don't let him bite you and hit him right in the heart. Before the duo could catch their breath, they were surprised by the attack of another creature that decided to strike Johnny because he was an easier prey, who ended up losing his stake. Even unarmed, however, courageous Johnny continued to fight. The boy was heavy-handed and punched the creature right in the face. Fortunately for the boy, the monster fell on a branch that pierced its chest. Arthur, look. Lewis was waiting for them in the middle of the camp by the fire and seemed rather calm. He had a wicked smile on his face. At that very moment, Rusty Cage realized there was something wrong. One of the gang members was missing. Manuald attacked Rusty from the flank, ripping the strap from his back and sending his hat flying far away. As the two of them struggled on the ground, Johnny spotted Rusty's torn bag. That was not the first time that Arthur Cage faced a creature like that. Hence, it was not difficult for him to get the upper hand over the monster and terminate the creature by driving the stake through its chest. His opponent was dead. But when Arthur tried to pull the stake out of its chest, it broke off. With remarkable speed, Lewis caught Rusty off guard and lifted him up by his neck. A hero's blood is much tastier. 
Rusty noticed that Johnny was grabbing something from his bag. Take it, Rusty. Arthur caught the head of garlic thrown by the boy. Rusty Cage? The shiver of eternal fire? Surprised to find out who his opponent was, he took advantage of Lewis's confusion and shoved the garlic down the creature's throat. Good job, kid. I can't let what happened to Anna repeat itself. I do this for the victims of these monsters. I've got a score to settle with them. While the sun was starting to rise, the creature, which was choking in pain, cried tears of blood and burst into flames. Arthur, Rusty Cage, with the help of Johnny M. Little, liberated those lands from yet another pack of vampires. But their work was far from over.